Hello, my friend. How are you today? This is Evangelist Elmo Soda Priller. I got a good message for you today. And the title of this message is To Love is Great. To Love is Great. That is the greatest of all. So I have a good message for you today. I'm so happy that you was able to stop by and be with us and join with us today. So just sit back and relax and listen to the message because it's going to help you and help someone else too. Yeah. So, uh, I tell you what, you're close to your wife, you're close to your children, you see them most of the time, and they love you. You love them and they love you. But one thing you have to do, or should do, to bring more joy to that love, put your hand on their shoulder, put your hand around their neck, and tell them what you love them, and you're proud of them. That will make all the difference to know that they're secure in their love for you. You demonstrate that to them. You'll be so happy. You know what? It'll also bring peace to your home. Because God said to love one another, and it is a good thing. It is good. And you need more. Put that arms around your neck and your shoulder and tell them, you, you see how much it's going to help you. You see what I mean? It is great. It brings great joy to them. To say I love you is great, but still there's something greater than that. When you show love and kindness as well, you see? Show love and kindness to one another. In the Bible, our Heavenly Father said, husband, love your wife. Wife, love your husband. He told him that for a reason, because he wanted to bring unity and peace and harmony in the family. Express that love and show that love. And God be ready to help you when you do the things He call you to do. It makes a big difference in the children as well. Because a lot of kids today, as you know, they, they're drifting around. They don't have a, a steady home life because some of the some of the mothers and fathers are separated. They're going their own ways. And they need that strength. They need that encouragement. They need somebody to tell them that they're loved. They're worthy of being existing in this world. So you do that to them. It'd be a great joy to them, great, great comfort to them. Praise the Lord. I do in this, God will always bless you and bless your home and keep it happy and healthy. God wants all of us to obey Him and He'll teach us how to love one another. That's where, that's where the love comes from. Like Jesus said some time ago, no greater love than this than the man laid on his life for his friends. So you are my friends if you do what I command you. When you do these things, that's when God is very pleased. See, love says there is no greater love. That's a beautiful thing. See, you are my friends if you do what I command you. Isn't that beautiful? And God tells us to love one another. You can be happy. But you see, God's love is agape love. It's different from the love that we know. Agape love is this. It's not looking for anything in return. No requirements, you don't have to do anything. It's a free gift, and it all happened on the cross of Calvary when Jesus Christ shed his precious blood for us, for our sins, our deep and trespasses. That's a free gift with no requirements. And he's not looking for anything from us. The only thing is obedience, he wants to be. And the reason why he wants to be obedient to him, he continues to show us how to grow towards our destiny. And it's good news. That is good news, my friend. I hope you all understand this message because it's very important about love. And love, that's what we all need. Would you imagine if people would do those things, how the world would be a better place to live? The wives love your husbands, husbands love your wives, and your children is loving as well. And they pass this along to other people and what they see. So my friend, I hope you understand this because it's very beautiful, see? Let's read and say, well, see what the Bible says about this. The Lord said, love your enemies. Isn't that powerful? Love your enemies. Bless them and curse you. And do good to them and hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. And God wants you to do it. He, did, he wants you to do it for a reason. Yeah, you must be uh, a good father 
to your children. Our Heavenly Father tells us how to walk, how to talk. The sun, the sun will rise upon the just and unjust, which means God is watching over all of his children. Some of them have gone astray, they're not back home yet, but he's watching over all of them because he helped us in the palm of his hand. He's trying to show some things, but sometimes people are just they're not ready to change their way, you know. It takes a little time. So God is patient with them. He's waiting for them. He's sending rain upon the just and the unjust. The good, bad, and indifferent God is still there, watching almost all of us. And I really remember some time ago when you did some love, some acts of love and kindness to people, how you felt. You had that joy. You felt good. You felt happy. You felt peaceful. You felt worthy. You see? So when you do those things, uh, God will give you that blessing. Love and kindness is very important. To be happy and peaceful. This is what God is showing us. If we continue to act the acts of love and kindness, God will bless us every day and give us his peace in the beautiful. Because there's a lot of people looking for peace to know where to find it. And that is good news. That is good news. You remember when you got married? You had a commitment, an obligation? And they is uh, to honor one another, to love one another, to honor one another. That was a commitment you made, to love one another and honor one another and obey one another. So when you do these things, God will make a strong union, a bond between you and your, your husband and wife be together, and you'll have peace and harmony in your homes. Why? Because you're loving one another. That's what God calls us. That's our commitment we have and our honor, honor and obey. So let's keep our commitment to God and we continue to bless our home and our marriage. Praise the Lord. That is good news. That is good news. We have help along the way to help us in these dreadful times we're living today. Time of uncertainty and confusion, misunderstanding and, and unbelief in this, the world we live in. But what I'm going to say is very, very important at this time. Oh, yes. If someone had uh, showed you hatred or disrespect you in any way, try to degrade your personality and what you stand for, the Lord Jesus Christ said, when you come into someone's house, let your peace be upon this home. But if your peace is not received and respected, shake off the dust of your heels and your feet and leave that house and take that peace with you. That's what God said for us to do because he, he don't reward bad behavior. He says, shake off the dust of your feet. God do not reward bad behavior, but you have, a, you have to forgive people. This is so important. I can't say it enough. No matter what anyone will say or do to you, hurt you in any way, degrade you, and, and, and attack your character, whatever it might be, you have to forgive them. That's the key. God said to do that, and the reason why he said because you'll have peace. Whatever somebody did to you, whatever they did to you, if you harbor it into your spirit, you equally as guilty to the party that, that hurt you. You're equal, and God cannot work in your life the way He would like to. There's many things God wants to show us each and every day. But if we harbor the resentment, evil thoughts in our spirit, in our soul, in our mind, God cannot work in, in our life the way He would like to. So I hope you understand it, because it's very, it's, very, it's very good to know this. Many people try to get back at people, see? It's kind of hard to forget, but you have to forgive. When you when you forgive a person, you know what that means? I'm not wishing any bad thing come to upon them. I'm not wishing any bad harm come to them. I'll forgive them. It's kind of hard to forget. But God said for, to forgive. And that's what we do, okay? Always remember that. That's, 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 what, that's what we speak about love. That's what love is. 
Because God was very patient with us throughout the years. He still is today. All the stupid and foolish things that people do today. Sinful, lustful things that he's doing. And he's still waiting for them. Because he's children. All God's children. He wants them to come back home. He's tapped into them, tries to, to, to get their attention, but they're so busy doing things. They got places to go, things to do. They got things to see. They're so busy. And God wants them to come back home and to receive his son. And then he heart as Lord and Savior. He would change their life. Each and every day would have peace with God. He show them to deal with people, how to live in this world, and also about reading the Bible. Because God is a love letter to God, to his children, the Bible is. There's so many beautiful things in the Bible that God wants us to know, to see. To get spiritual wisdom, see? And God gave you his grace, which is very beautiful. It's a favor. That's favor with God. When you have favor with God, he's going to love you, he's going to protect you, guide you, and give you everything you need. Not what you want now, but what you need. You need housing, you need clothing, you need food. So remember that. So you have a peaceful life. You're not looking for any anything outside of God's kingdom, which is love, peace, and joy. When you do things and follow the worldly way of the world, you have a problem. And God don't want you to go there. He's trying to keep you out of that world. Because what is it? He said, in this world, the wisdom of this foolishness. He didn't reveal all these truths of the world because they're sinners. They got to come across of Calvary and receive the Jesus Christ and Lord and Savior. You cleanse them of their wicked, evil ways that they have. The evil, wicked ways. So God wants to show them how to come back home and be peaceful, be quiet, and have a, have a relationship with God, your Father. If they only know that. You see, some people are kind of confused, not knowing what's really true and what's not. But God said, I worry this truth in John 17, 17. But this is the greatest thing you ever want to have done to you. And you know God is real. When you confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, coming to your heart as Lord and Savior, you know what's going to happen? Your life will be changed. You're going to have His love, you have His peace and joy. You're going to have some things along the way that's going to hurt you, you have a pain here, pain there, you know? But that's normal and natural. God said, I'll give you no more than you can bear. He's not going to put the pain on you that you can't take it. But it's just temporary. Pain and suffering and stuff is temporary. If God want to take you home soon, okay. That's what that's the, if God got a plan set for each and every one of us. Our time is already set. It's already, it's no mistake. God is right on time and nothing will happen before time. Oh, remember that. If you remember this, you'll have peace each and every day. Each and every day you have peace with it. Don't be anxious for anything. God tells you that in his word. Don't be anxious for anything. You see? And you take one day at a time and he'll show you how to live. Many things in this world you want to have love and you want to have peace. And God will give you joy. Isn't that beautiful? So that's why this message is so important. To love is great. To love is great. Praise the Lord. Love is great. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and a thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, I lift shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up mine hands to thy name. So once again, if we show love and kindness to one another, God will continue to bless us, and bless your home, and bless your family. Isn't that beautiful? In our prayer, we should ask God for help to show us what shall we do and where should we go so we could help someone today. Jesus said, when you do it to least these my brothers did it to me. And what did he say? Feed the hungry, hold the naked, and set the captives free. When you dead these to the least of my brethren, you have done it to me. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? So you ask God to show you 
what do you want? What do you want him? What do you want to do? And where should you go to do that? And you'd be happy with it too. Because I've served six years hospitals and rest homes serving with people, praying with people. God anointed me and ordained me to do that work. So when you be a, a yielded vessel unto God, you'd be surprised at how far he will take you. he give you everything you need to do the job. He'll do you every, give you everything you need to do the job. So be available. Be humble before God and ask him to give, to give you a purpose and direction in life because life is beautiful when you let God lead you and you get out of the way. Because many things you want to say, one thing, anything you want to do. But sometimes you're going in the wrong direction, you're moving too fast sometimes. You got to slow down and God will help you show you to get there. Glory to God. Isn't that beautiful? It's good to remember. See, we we'll always remember what the Lord Jesus Christ said. Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and set the captives free. Well, you've done it to me, and my brother, you've done it to me. That's what God is saying to each and every one of us. Praise the Lord. My friend, if you want to come close to God and receive Him, to receive all the wonderful, beautiful things I've told you today, that with no walking, no talking, God will show you His way. All you have to do is repeat this prayer after me. Almighty God, my Heavenly Father, I believe your son, Jesus Christ, of Nazareth, died on the cross of Calvary for me. I now accept into my heart as my Lord and Savior, trusting in him for the salvation of my soul. Lord, help me do thy will each day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer, my friend, you're on the road to a new life with love, peace, and joy. God gave you strength and wisdom. He gave you his guidance, direction, and spiritual wisdom. It's far superior to the wisdom of sin's well. The Lord said this wisdom in the world is foolishness. You can see things you have never seen before in your life. And God will show you things to come day by day with spiritual wisdom. So my friend, I'm out of time right now. So go and love one another. Go forth in peace and love one another as God told us to love one another and forgive one another. Pray for yourself and pray for your family. Pray for your president. Keep me in prayer. I'll see you in church on Sunday. God bless you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This is Evangelist Elmo Sotopura. Love you. Bye now.